the rainbow day spectrum of the western dome is in the eastern turned inside out to become the night spectrum discovered by Goethe. Hence there is no green in the eastern dome. Rudolf Steiner himself painted the south side because the painters implored him to. Colors flow in great breathing movements. In places, the flowing gathers to shapes, namely in the middle and above each of the twelve columns where representatives of different principles of initiation form a circle. In the middle, the architrave protrudes upward. This motif does not belong to the circle of twelve. It is both higher and taller. The yellow is the central of the background colors of the small dome. And yellow has itself the tendency to radiate from a strong center. Hence in the middle of this central zone, the sunlight, anchored in the brown below, gathers itself into a human body. Upward and to the right, the yellow heats up to a bloated red. Downward and to the left, it condenses to a tangled yellow-brown. In the free middle, it ennobles the human form in relation to the earth. Ariman has too many legs. Lucifer, in exchange, has none. The rays, earthward paths of the spirit of the sun, also tend tangentially to Lucifer and radially to Ariman. Lucifer reaches a hand to Christ, and so does Ariman. Indeed, they imitate his gesture. In death, man becomes a star. The sun, warm and radiant, gives energy. The moon, cool and carrying, gives form. Above the red angel, the sun is transformed by Christ for the healing of Ariman. Held near the moon on the side of the blue angel, the overly red Lucifer with his puffed up head is turned to the earth. Christ takes the polarity into his own being his left hand tinged with blue, his right with red, the two sides of the face also. Forces of love are sent to the adversary powers. The people who gather in the Room of Thrones practice twelve paths of initiation. All lead to individual realization of the essential being of man, whose archetype, gathering them all, is Christ.
Above the first column, counting from the east, and suggesting the throne at the base of the column, is this motif, showing a new relation to the double, or etheric shadow, which in the first of many sketches by Rudolf Steiner appears as a beast. Man of the future humanizes and integrates it by developing capacities latent in Russian humanity. Out of blue, the shape of an angel arises. Out of the cloud, a centaur. This centaur is not stuck, but developing and connecting with the starry cosmos. Etheric beings below and above man, beast and angel, are both needed in the initiation of the sixth epoch. The goal and what needs to be transformed belong together, man and his double, the stars and the cross, the angel and the centaur. The angel joins these beings with an embracing mediating gesture. Here the colors glow in their purity. Then Ariman breaks in as massive blackness, and the colors of the following motifs are often broken. The double, here in the lower left, itself an Arimanic etheric condensation of the, of the untransformed part of the soul, is connected with Ariman's shadow. The throne at the base of the second column emphasizes a twofoldness, and so does the painting above it, the black contracting and hardening, the red heating melting, expanding. The feeling quality of these two colors becomes shape, revealing the duality of Ariman and Lucifer. The two meet, causing, below them, two distortions of humanity to diverge. The one centaur is more masculine, the other feminine. The one with a pinched face, the other spreading. The one in an angular field, the other in a round. The wings of the Arimonic centaur have contracted almost to clubs. The polarity of darkness and light was taught by Zarathustra and practiced in the modern age by Dürer, Rembrandt, and Goethe. The discovery of the true eye in the midst of this polarity may therefore be called the Germanic Persian initiation principle by developing capacities latent in Central European humanity, the man of the present, in his split nature, can stand firm, even when the Ariman cliff shuts him off from the world of light beyond. What inspires him from above 
is the tension. To endure it, you need to look upon the child with joy. The child is akin to the golden middle of the middle motif. Above the third throne, its occupant appears. In the sketches, the lower is heavier, the upper more active in color. This causes the repeating shape to vary. Below, it is calmly collected strictly symmetrical, sturdy of limb, in the middle, moving, breathing, fanning, in living rhythm, above, raying, an aura about the head. Above the Egyptian, shines the being who sends him the imaginations. Above that, a still higher being, sending the inspirations. In the Egyptian initiation, the Isis experience of the widowed soul leads to the birth of the higher self as Horus Osiris, the young spirit being in the heights. This principle of initiation is relevant today. The divine lies dismembered in its enchanted grave, namely the world of the senses. The cognitive drama brings it to life in the human soul. The Egyptian initiate was rendered so well by Margarita Voloshin that Rudolf Steiner refused to repaint it. He merely integrated it with some swaths of color. Above the fourth throne, yellow shines in gentle strength, taking shape as Apollo with the lyre. It is of the essence of the open sun space of the dome, and of the great Christ figure in the middle. Below, the color becomes slightly more earthly, connecting with the throne. Above, it intensifies. Apollo harmonizes the soul forces, thanks to the archangel-like being working above and through him as the original human soul, mediating the deed of Christ. The Hellenic initiate below appears in the sketches like the cult statue of Athena in the Parthenon. The image of the higher self appears on the right this time, where she reaches into the world. First, in the sketches, as the winged goddess of victory, then as countenances Pythia figures mediating from the surrounding cosmos. Her left receives the healing staff of Asclepius, the winding serpent forces from below, the ordering Apollonian ray from above. 
This prepares the inspiration from below in the next motif. Blue tends to close itself off. We experience thoughts as our own, but also as dead. Here, the blue shows the increased forces of death in the spectator consciousness of the modern intellect. Hence the almost inartistic element of writing Ich means I. In the self-enclosure, the I is experienced, but in a reflective consciousness. This is a precondition for inner freeness. Below, the blue condenses to black. The lifeless usurps the throne. Again with the writing. This can prepare the way for the intellect itself to become evil in our day. Above, his angel leaves him free, gently accompanying his cold experience. The initiation of the modern age is shown, and not primarily its embodiment in Faust. The new initiation begins with study, with the transformation of thinking. Indeed, he is clearly reading the philosophy of spiritual activity. The golden orange-yellow flows freely, still further loosening the anchoring in the throne. The child floats. The color is akin to the child in the Germanic-Persian initiation motif, and to the golden middle of the great Christ painting. The blue coldness of the present is balanced and healed by the youth forces of the future Jupiter evolution, when the warmth of living thinking, which had to be suppressed for the sake of human independence, will again be attained. The hand sending the blessing of the future child, matches the receiving hand of the angel. Because the eastern dome is smaller and also seen from a distance, the ark can be surveyed. The six motifs of the left side appear in so-called counter colors, which are not the same as complementary colors. The changed colors give rise to changed shapes. Who will finish a task like that? As Torsten Steen hints, the masters of wisdom 
and of the harmony of feelings would seem to have painted here. <laughs>